I'm here to be an all-time great. Right? Now rap with the best. Perfect yellow, perfect yellow, perfect yellow, perfect yellow. The Lakers repeat back-to-back title. Welcome to the Big Baby Jonathan Sports Podcast. Oh, he's smoking hot. The latest Laker news. Another great Showtime feed. The greatest Laker show. This is going to be legendary for a long time. This is is the Big Baby Jonathan Sports Podcast. Lakers all day. Go Lakers! What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Big Baby, here from Big Baby Sports. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, turn on those post notifications for each and every podcast. I got Michael Thompson, two-time NBA champions from the Showtime Lakers, man. Welcome to Big Baby Sports, man. I'll be here long overdue. Yeah, man, it's long overdue, man. Let's get right into it, man. So the Showtime Lakers, man. So tell us about that experience, man. What was that like being a part of that? Such a great team in the Showtime Lakers, man. You know, the crazy thing about that is before I joined the Lakers, I was in the league for eight years. So it wasn't like I was a young rookie just coming into the league and experiencing uh, big games for the first time. And I had been in big games before. Mm Mm-hmm. Get on the on the calendar, obviously schedule. But when you join the Lakers, when you time Lakers, it was different. It was like a different level. It was like um, you went from being in a decent band, decent rock band. All of a sudden, now you're a member of the Rolling Stones. You know, yeah. now you're playing with the biggest uh, on the biggest stage with the on the biggest franchise, and arguably all the sport on with the New York Yankees and Boston Celtics. And now you join the LA Lakers. It was like being on a brighter stage because of the expectations and the Hall of Famers I was playing with. Yeah, man, that's that's amazing, man. Like I've watched you guys for a long time. You guys very physical, competitive, man. So do you feel like this Showtime Lakers back in the day can play in this era of basketball? Oh, yeah, of course. All the great players will transition to play today. Willie Mays would be a star today. Jim Brown would be a great NFL player today. Muhammad Ali would dominate heavyweights today. So the greats of the past, could always, the games would always evolve, just like the game has evolved, and they could adapt and fit in like they did in the past. Will Chamberlain, Kareem, a young Kareem. They definitely could, uh, and that Showtime Laker team, we ran the fast break. The only difference from that team to the games today, to the teams today, is we didn't shoot as many threes, but we would adapt, shoot more threes, because we had three-point shooters on the team. Guys like Byron Scott was one of the best shooters this game's ever seen. Magic could make threes. Michael Cooper could make threes. We just shot maybe 10 threes a game. So that's the only uh, difference in our game this year is we'd be, we'd be shooting 25 to 30 threes as opposed to 8 to 10 back then. But as far as playing a style of play today, I mean, they still wouldn't have anybody in the league. Kareem, James Worthy could score on anyone. Magic Johnson would still be the best point guard in basketball if he was playing today. Yeah, we could easily adapt it today and dominate. Yeah, most definitely, man. And also, too, let's get into as well. If you switch Stephen Curry's role, put Stephen Curry on that Laker team in the Showtime era, put Magic Johnson on the Warriors, how do you think Stephen Curry would do with that Showtime Lakers and Magic Johnson with the Golden State Warriors? They switched question. the role. No one's ever asked that before. Steph was all point guard instead of Magic. Steph is a, obviously a great playmaker, arguably the best shooter that's ever played the game. So he would. both those guys would fit on any team in any era magic leading uh, any team this year playing for the warriors with clay and draymond and especially with ran around they would have won five or six championships in a row if those guys could have stayed together so magic would dominate in any system so it's steph curry they could play in a system as great as they are yeah i feel like they would i feel like curry would man with kareem with james worthy byron scott stephen curry would do wonders on that team same with magic johnson he'll have kevin durant he would have you know, Iguodala, Clay Thompson, you know, your son. That would be a crazy, crazy team. I think they'd probably win six or seven with, with Magic Johnson and Cameron. Yeah, Durant. And, and with the healthy staff and the healthy yep. – Yeah, with – oh, my goodness, yeah. They, if Kevin Durant would have stayed on that team and that would have stayed healthy, they probably would have won five in a row. But, of course, Durant chose to leave. Clay got hurt. And uh, we yeah. never got the, the greatness of that team over an expensive period of time. But if you had a Magic on – the, uh, on the Warrior team, on that Warrior team, healthy, they could have won five or six in a row, and Bill Russell did, winning eight in a row. Yeah, yeah, Michael Thomas, that, that's a good one. Also, too, man, like, 
I know your son was Lakers were trying to get Clay. What was the deciding factor in Clay going to the Dallas Mavericks? In your opinion, I think I think Clay just uh, he looked at the E Wade both options and he liked uh, the possibility of playing with the Lakers. It really appealed to him a lot at home. We always talked about playing because, but I think when he saw how young Kyrie and Luca are, especially Kyrie's only thirty one, but his games stay at a high level for the next uh, six or seven years. The way he plays, and Luca's just trying to come into his prime, um, before twenty five years of age. So. And then you've got two young, big guys there, and Derek Gaff, Derek Lively. So he looked at that rock and saw that he had a better chance probably be there to get back to the finals than anywhere else because they were just missing. All they needed was one last piece was a three-point shooter in Dallas, and he just thought he would fit in perfectly there. So that's why he chose to go there as opposed to coming coming back home into the Lakers. Yeah, I I understand why he went to Dallas because, you know, Dallas just went to the finals. You know, I feel like maybe Clay could be like, oh, I'm that missing piece that could get him over the hump. And I get it. You know, I would want the Lakers, but it's a business, so I understand it. I get it 100%. Um, so, Pat Riley, what do you think of Pat Riley as a coach, and how do you feel like he would coach in today's NBA? Oh, Riles is one. Of, if you do the Mount Rushmore of NBA coaches, four faces of the coaches ever, obviously it'd be Red Ock, Greg Popovich, um, Phil Jackson and Pat Riley. they would be the four faces up there. Pat Riley was that great in today's game. He would easily translate into a great coach. He already did it in the 2000s when he led the Miami Heat uh, finals uh, with uh, Shaq and Dwayne. So he's already proven that he could he could coach in this era. Guys like Pat Riley can coach in any era because he he's a man. He, he expects you to be a pro and to be a man to be to help hold yourself accountable and to show up responsible for your for your duties. And uh, that's. Sometimes that's what's missing in a lot of these teams. Guys, uh, coaches expecting and demanding that uh, their players themselves like professionals, like men. As that's what Pat Riley demanded and expected. So if he coached in today's uh, era, he would easily be successful because he'd find those kind of players, players, he, guys who want to be winners, and that's all they cared about. So that's what he cared about. And if he was coaching twenty twenties, he definitely still success. Yeah, I think Pat Riley would be successful in the NBA in today's era too. I just feel like Pat Riley would hold these players accountable, you know, because in today's NBA, a lot of, in my opinion, a lot of players, if you hold them accountable, they take offense, they get upset. That's just how I see it, you know, and I feel like Pat Riley would be a great coach in this era. You know, I think he would bring a lot of winning to this league, man. He already is a winner, but you put him on like Oklahoma City, I feel like he would turn Oklahoma City Thunder into a big time championship oh, yeah. team. Those, you know, yeah, yeah, those young guys would grow up in a hurry because Ross would expect conduct themselves like adults for excuses but to go out there and put work in bring the work ethic uh get it set up in practice that's the way riley did. and if you can't do it then he would get you and get somebody else and bring someone else who, who's willing to do it who's able and capable of doing it rouse is a no-nonsense coach a no-nonsense executive and that's why he's been so successful in miami yeah yeah and also too man let's dive into the lakers season man What's the expectations for J.J. Redick in his first year with the Los Angeles Lakers? I think J.J. will be fine. He's got a great an assistant coach type guy and Pat and LeBron James he can uh, depend on to help him for this team. Uh, A.D. is still one of the best three centers in the game, and the Lakers have a good balanced run up and down. So um, obviously the three best teams. The people might, will probably say are going to be Dallas, Minnesota, and uh, Oklahoma City in no particular. But I think the Lakers are one of the top in the West, and I don't think they'll be worrying about being in the play-in tournament, trying to get to the top eight. So if they can just uh, have some good health this year, they're deep, they're long, they're versatile. Uh, I think they'll be well coached under J.J. Redick, a fresh new voice, fresh new ideas. So I think this team is going to support a lot of people this year. And if you can win 50 games in the West, that means you've had a great season because it's so tough. And I think the Lakers are capable of 50 games. Yeah, I feel like J.J. Ray is going to be good with the Lakers this year. I feel like he's going to implement a good offensive system, defense system. And everybody is like D'Angelo Russell. How do you feel like he's going to fit with this new style of play with J.J. Riddick? D'Angelo will be all right. He had a good uh, He had some against uh, Denver in the playoffs, but he can shoot. He can get on, on a rhythm and uh, expect him if the opposing team leave him open. And this is the last year of his contract, so you know he's going to be motivated to have a big year. 
so he can uh, sign another contract. So I think De- D'Angelo will be fine and uh, fit right in with what J.J. wants him to do. And, um, you know, he'll be willing to, 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 to fit in whatever role his role is going to be. Sometimes he's going to leave the team for him because he's that good of a shooter. And sometimes it'll be someone else's turn, and he'll just be a, a, a facilitator. So D'Angelo's going to be all right. D'Angelo, yeah, I feel like he's going to have a great season. He Last year he uh, all-time three-point, you know, on the Lakers. You know, he passed that, and he just – Denver just – had a hard time versus Denver, but I feel like you can learn from that. Learn from that experience last two seasons and get better from it. You know what I mean? And just how I feel about Dila. He can learn from those. Yeah, and I think JJ. Series. You know, so. I think JJ and him will have a good relationship. I'm sure they're going to talk if they haven't already or during training camp. They'll spell out his role for him. His expectations are for D'Angelo and uh, and JJ being a time scorer himself, big time shooter. Uh, he'll be a good. Uh, a good teacher, a good mentor for D'Angelo here in this, uh, I think, a seventh or eighth season. Yep, he's going to be good this season. Also, too, man, we got to get into it, man. Team USA, man, they got the gold, man. That's, you know, I'm excited for that, too. They got the gold, man. LeBron playing at a high level still. You know, it's not surprising. Um, where does Le- like where does LeBron have to do to get a uh, jersey retired with the Lakers and a statue? Well, he already – He's one of arguably the greatest player to ever play. Him, Kareem, or Michael Jordan, or Will Chamberlain. Those are the four names to me. So led the Lakers to a championship in 20. Um, obviously, uh, I think he's been here long enough now where he definitely get a outside. Even though he's played in Cleveland, he'll get a statue there. He might even get one in Miami. I think he deserves one in Miami too. He led them to two championships. So he deserves so he'll, he'll have three ships with three three trophies uh, statues with three different franchises, which he deserves. And definitely will get a statue uh, at Crypto.com Arena. He deserves one, and um, that's a few years down the road because I think he'll play this year and maybe one more, and then probably hang it up. But uh, yeah, LeBron James has done enough uh, to cement himself in Laker Laker legendary status. He's gonna have a statue outside too. Yeah, that's going to be amazing for LeBron. And, you know, he's one of the, the best players of all time, you know. And speaking of one of the best players of all time, man, Kobe Bryant, man, like he is about to have – He's I know he had one with number – holding up for 81, and then he had the one with Gigi. What's the statue emblem going to be for the last one? Like what do you think it's going to be? It's going to be – obviously, it's going to be number 24. I think it's going to be him and his – Fade away looking shot pose. Uh, the one he's got is he's got one the holding up number one, but I think the last one's gonna be him in a shooting motion. I think kind of cool just because he had that classic kind of fade away, fade away shot. So, uh, almost like a Dirk Nowitzki one legged uh, fall away. So, I think that that's what the fo- pose is gonna be. Yeah, I feel like for me, man, I in my opinion, I feel like it's gonna be him doing the scores table one because he beat Boston, you know, because. You know, that, that one was amazing, man. Beating Boston 20, 2010, man, that was amazing yeah. comeback, man. Like, beat, just losing in 2008, I'm still yeah. pissed off about it. Even 2004, I'm pissed off when yeah. I lost to the Pistons. I feel like that season, 2004, I feel like we should have beaten Detroit. But Detroit that season was coached really well. Their defense was amazing. Rasheed Wallace, Ben Wallace, Rip Hamilton, Chauncey Billups, Tayshaun Prince. So that team was very good on the wings, but just – just that season, those two seasons, man, really still piss me off, man. Losing in the finals. Yeah, those championships, the Lakers had a chance to win. Detroit, they they could have won that one. Um, and, of course, Boston was just really good that year. But imagine if Kobe would have won. Had, he would have passed Jordan, won those yeah. two championships. But uh, Detroit was tough. And they deserved it. And so Boston with Kevin Garnett and, and his crew and Paul Pierce. But uh, it, was, it, it was right there for to get seven rings but hey sometimes you got to settle for five and can't argue with that yeah you know kobe man is arguably best in my opinion you know best laker of all time um just the way he presents the game his work ethic yeah. his demeanor so, yeah. you know yeah and you're wrong for saying that a lot of people do say that when people ask me who i think is the greatest laker of all time i said it's magic johnson and if you say it's kobe that's nothing wrong with that that's a it's a, also a great uh Great comment, too. Great uh, opinion. Um, but I think it's magic for me because of – obviously, magic didn't play as long as Kobe. But to me, the people say, well, why do you put over Kobe? I say because he's the greatest leader to me that's ever played basketball, the way he led, 
the way he played. And to me, his to me, his championships, his five rings had a higher degree of difficulty than you look at who Magic had to beat. Mm -hmm. Five. Larry Bird Celtics. He had to beat Dr. J Seven Sixers and Isaiah Thomas's boy Pistons. Oh my goodness. That is like a going through a gauntlet of Hall of Fame team that Magic yeah. had to be win those five championships. So that's why I put him as the number one Laker of all time. Yeah, Magic Johnson's up there, man. You know, I, I feel like if he was, like I said, if he was on like even this Laker team, Magic Johnson was on this Laker team with LeBron and AD, whew, that would be amazing. No look passes from oh, yeah. Magic to LeBron. It would be Showtime era oh, point 2.0. Yeah, thirty-year-old Magic Johnson on this team, the Lakers would be the favorite to win it this year by, by yeah, far. Then, if he was like thirty-year, thirty-year-old Magic Johnson, yeah, they can bring you in for ten to fifteen, ten to twenty minutes a game. You know, at center. <laughs> you know, not a, not at this. Maybe if I was thirty-two, yeah, I could I give him twenty-five minutes, no question about it. Behind Anthony, I'd have been happy to do that. Yeah, you know, and um, real quick, the twenty twenty championship. What do you think of people saying it doesn't count? It doesn't count and stuff. What do you think about people saying that about the 2020 championship team? No, it it counts because everybody in the bubble had the same had to go through the same experience. Yeah, it was it was different. It was unique. It, uh, sort of uh, you know change to see the league playing in that situation, but they had no choice. Other teams there had the same opportunity, just like the Lakers did, and they didn't. So because everybody else played under the same condition. It definitely is a legitimate championship. Yeah, I feel like it's one of the best in my like it's up there, you know, because 2020 was a crazy year with stuff going around the world, yeah. Kobe passing away, all that stuff. Yeah. I feel like the way that they yeah. finished it, you know, I feel like Kobe's was with that team in spirit. Like I feel like he was there, you know, just the way that the team preparation the game, just just the way that the team was running, you know, and I, it's I feel like it's up there with 2010 in my opinion. The way that you know, the way that they finished oh, yeah. it. Because of the unusual circumstances, that was a strange way to win a championship. It was different. You weren't in your comfort zone at your house or in your arena. To me, it made it even more difficult to, to win it in that, under those circumstances. Yeah, it was un, it was unfortunate. But the fact that when it's the Lakers, anytime Lakers win something, oh, it doesn't count. But if somebody else wins, it's okay. But like, like it's the Lakers. We win and we get scrutinized. But I guess that's just part of being the Lakers, you know. If you win, you get scrutinized. Yeah, and that's like, you know, when you're the the best looking guy or the the hottest girl, and you know, people are gonna be jealous of you. And that's what the Lakers yeah. of old, you know, the hottest girl in school or the best looking guy, the football captain and stuff. So people get a little jealous of him. So, and uh, that's just nature. Yeah, it is, man. It's you know, I have a Kobe story. Um, he followed me on Twitter um, like years ago when he tore his Achilles and he was in the tweeting and he said i'll follow people where the game plan versus the spurs i said go to, through pal gasol move the ball around 10 minutes later he follows me and we have a conversation and arguably one of the best experiences on social media i've ever experienced with kobe bryant yeah kobe was a great guy man he was a man of the people he was always friendly to people i used to see him see him behind the scenes when a lot of people didn't see him because i traveled with him and stuff and saw how yeah. he uh, embraced the public embraced his fans to come up to him and take selfies to sell sign autographs so kobe was a mega star, the biggest star in the NBA at the time, but uh, he was very approachable and very polite and kind and nice to his fans. I always appreciate that and respected that about him. Yeah, you know, I met him in person a couple of times. Didn't take a picture with him, um, just talked to him, chopped it up. He's really our, you know, humble and nice. You know, he's really re mellow, oh. and really relaxed. Um, but uh, in 2025, man, I'm going to the Bahamas. Do you have any good recommendation spots for any good eating places in the Bahamas? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You got to go over to the fish fry. Once you get there, just ask the uh, the cab drivers. They'll tell you where to go. The area called the fish fry. You can get some great native food. So, yeah, that's very close. Everything's close to Nassau or via Nassau. If you have a hotel, you stay in, everything's a 15, 20 minute drive or even less because everything's so close together. But definitely always head over to the fish fry where you can get some good old native food, some good old uh, fish, uh, some nice dishes and stuff. So you'll have a good time. All right, man. Yep. I'll have a good time looking forward to it. And also, too, I had you down as when I first started this podcasting journey in 2016. Finally got you on, man. Finally got you on as one of my right. goals. I'm glad to be here, man. Yep. Appreciate it, man. That's going to do it for Big Baby Sports. Yep, man. Thanks for joining, Michael All Thompson. Right. Appreciate you. All right.
All right, baby. Talk to you soon.